Hey guys, I am trying not to, I keep dropping everything on the floor because I don't have a table in here of any form yet. I've got like an ottoman, which is fabric, and everything keeps sliding off of it. So <laughs> I like just get set up to film and then everything starts falling over and I'm like, oh goodness. Anyway, that's totally a side note. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christine, a homeschooling mom of three. And today I'm gonna share with you a flip through of the Kindergarten Math with Confidence. Guys, I'm back with more Math with Confidence content. This time it is the kindergarten level. This is kind of a spoiler for um, curriculum picks for next year, but I think I've alluded to it already that I was gonna use the kindergarten level with my five-year-old when she starts her kindergarten level next year. Um, so I thought I would do a flip through of it for you before we start working on it. I printed it all out. This is the workbook, which is significantly smaller than the other workbooks. Like grade one jumps up a lot. This is, this is thin. So um, yeah, it's really sweet. I'm excited to do it with her and she's so excited for it. So I'm gonna flip the camera around and just take you through it so you can see what it's like inside. I'll chat you through the whole process. I have done this for, I think, I don't know if I did it grade one, grade two, grade three. I've got, the ones that I've got, I will link for you so you can go check them out or just go ahead and do a search on my channel. They're all on there. I've done a lesson, do a lesson with us, that kind of thing. You can find all of that on my channel. There's lots of content covering math with confidence. So um, yeah, if you're looking for other levels, those are there. I think we will, this is like, yeah, we would have done all of their grade levels when we start this that are currently out. Grade four is coming out next year. So um, we would have done all of their current levels that are out, which is really exciting. So um, yeah, let's flip the camera around and take a look. Okay, so here we have all of the components for this level. So I have split the instructor's guide into two books because I prefer to have them smaller. I actually did this with my grade three one as well. You can see that's how thick it would be if I had them all together. And I just find it much easier to have them apart like that. Now I got the PDF version because I have been asked this several times. Everyone's like, how did you get your spiral bound? Like, where did you find it? No, I printed these at home. You can get it from Well-Trained Mind. They often have really good specials on them. Um, it's a very affordable math curriculum. And yeah, so you've got your workbook there. You have your instructor's guide there. If you're new to math with confidence, you cannot do one without the other. You cannot just buy the workbook. You absolutely need the instructor's guide. This is where the meat of the program is. And um, this will feel very basic and full flat if you don't have that. So that's just something to bear in mind when you're looking at this. I will show you the instructor's guide and then we'll have a look at the workbook. The workbook is really sweet and simple and cute. Um, uh, but we'll look at the instructor's guide first. So as I said, I broke mine down into two parts so that it's much more manageable. And I just, I made the labels myself to put on there. I just made my own covers. This is your instructor's guide. Everything as per usual is in grayscale, black and white. My printer was actually having issues when I printed this and you can see that because there's a few lines through it, but whatever, it still works. You got your table of contents here, which covers all the different units. There are 10 units, and this is set up like several of their other levels where you have got four day weeks. There are also books that are recommended if you wanted um, picture books to go with it, and they're a really fun way of just changing up the um, lessons, so. There's that, so you get your introduction. There are great instructions on how to use this book. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Great instructions on how to use this book. Um, what I really like about Math with Confidence is that they don't leave you high and dry. If your child's not grasping a concept, there are very clear um, tips on what to do. And you're not just left feeling like, well, do we just keep reviewing this like, you know, monotonously? No, there are, tips and advice on how to use it and how to make it work for your child. So I really like that. 
and it goes over the weeks and the units. You've got your lessons, how long things should take, which is sort of written in there. Scheduling tips, which is great, especially if you're new to homeschooling. And then how to supply your math kit, how to create your own math kit. So I think there is somewhere you can actually buy kits that are made to go along with this. If I can find it, I will try and link it for you. I'm sure I've seen it mentioned in some homeschool groups. But honestly, I have bought very little for our math with confidence. If you've got some shape blocks, which we had from the old Good and the Beautiful Math, um, 10 small counters, like, I mean, they recommend you got Legos, anything like that lying around. We have base 10 blocks and we use those as counters. Again, we had some manipulatives from um, Good and Beautiful Math that we use as well. Um, they've got US money, we've got our own New Zealand play money that we use, and then index cards. Now, I would recommend if you, instead of using index cards, you can get blank playing cards. And those are kind of nicer if you want to shuffle and that kind of thing. You can look for those um, and they come in their own box and everything. The other option if you don't want to do cards is to use an app that is um, like a spinning wheel app and it just like spins random numbers. I've been using that more recently and it just helps to have fewer things to have to use. The downside to that is, I don't know if in this grade level, but I know in grade one, they had your child writing numbers on these. And so if that's important to you, then stick with these, having the physical thing. Um, my kids learn how to write numbers in their handwriting, so I'm not super fussed about keeping these. I would prefer just to like press the button on the phone and just have it go to a random number. It's for the games mostly that I'm referring to, so that's something to be aware of. Anyway, shows you all the supplies that you might need here. And then it goes into your units, and as per usual, you get an overview what your child is supposed to be learning during this unit. And then you get your week overview and they tell you exactly what you're gonna need. You've got your math book for the week if you choose to do that. Suggestions for weaving it into everyday life. Household items you might need. And just like a general overview of what you're teaching and why it's important. Not many math curriculums share that with the parents. So I think that's fantastic. And then you go onto your lesson. And this is your lesson. Look how little this is. It's so cute. I'm so used, I'm like, I'm teaching grade three math at the moment and we're doing like multiplication and stuff like that. And so this looks so simple and sweet. Um, so yeah, this is going to be really neat. So there you've got 1.1, 1.2, focusing on your numbers here. This is a gentle introduction into math. And math with confidence, the one criticism I've seen of it is that people seem to think it's too simple and too gentle. I would very strongly disagree with that. It, it's a mastery based curriculum with spiral review and I don't think it's gentle at all. I think it's just very thorough. So I don't know, that's just my opinion on it. Um, yeah, so this, this is what your lessons look like. And then at the end of each week, you have the answer key here, which is probably, I don't know how much that is needed for, um, kindergarten, but you know, it's there. As you can see, they're just doing one page a day. So you've got four pages worth of that, and then you go on to week two. And again, I do love that there were illustrations in here as well. Um, now they will refer to the Black Line Masters, and those are found at the, end, the back of the book, but you can also get downloads off of their website if you wanna make multiple copies of those. I have photo, like not photocopied them, but printed them out and laminated the ones that we use over and over. And a lot of them, like your Black Line Master, is used across multiple grade levels. And so I just have one copy of that and I use it with each kid when I'm teaching. So um, that's something to bear in mind. A lot of them are used over several grade levels. So you don't have to have like multiple copies of them. So I'll just sort of skip through for you a bit. You can see here. We're like looking at sides and angles, working on shapes and squares. This is math book of the week. That is what it looks like by the time we get to nearing the end here. This is where you're using like household items. You get different soft toys and they're comparing Heights here, they're doing ordinal numbers. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, that kind of thing. 
but you're just using household objects which are great and they are genuinely household objects like I feel like some curriculums are like yeah just household objects and um, when you actually look at it it's like random stuff that I definitely don't have in my house <laughs> so that's something that's good to know so that's the first half second half is very much the same I'm just gonna skim through for you checkpoints these are really helpful especially here what to do if your child needs more practice there are specific recommendations on what to do which is incredibly helpful and because this is set up to just do four lessons a week in a school year it means you have time to stop and slow down if you need to so that's really helpful to know they, these are not necessarily written assessments that your child will do but it's just for you as the parent you know what they're capable of um, and you can go through this so for the sake of like really breaking things down here is a lesson this is what you're going to do this is where it shows you everything that's going to be included you've always got review and warm-up activity and then the workbook this is telling you what's going to happen in those and what you're going to need the first part is the review and warm-up sometimes we do this sometimes we do not depending on how well they know the subject matter and then we do the activity which is the teaching of the new um, information and then finally they go on to do the workbook so that's the last thing that they do and the workbook really is just solidifying what they have been taught in here so there we go that is what that looks like I forget how many lessons there are in here let's have a look 32.4 so there's 32 weeks worth of lessons so that's plenty of time in a year to you could zoom through it if you have a very math minded kid or you can take your time there's lots of time for review you get your scope and sequence at the back complete list of the math books for the week so this is really great if you want to look at your local library and see what they have your materials list excellent for if you're like checking things off before the school year starts and then you've got your um, black line masters back here so this is play money for families outside of the US or you could just purchase your own stuff. It's usually pretty affordable. And then shapes, if you wanna print these and laminate them or print them on cardstock. Again, Black Line Masters. Some examples there for their writing. Centimeter squares. You've got your 100 chart like this. I use with all my kids across all the grade levels, so I won't need to print that out again. And then acknowledgement. So that is the instructor's guide, and then we'll have a quick look at the workbook, which is very, very basic for this age. I love that it is basic. So this is what they would do for one lesson. They're gonna trace the number ones, and then they're gonna circle the ones. That's it. And I think that is very age appropriate and fantastic. Next lesson. They're going to trace the twos and circle the pairs. Then trace the threes and then they're going to match up. Trace the fours and then draw four balls in each box. So it's different every day, but it's still simple. And it's just mastering what they're being taught. It's age appropriate as far as like holding a pencil. They're not having to do like crazy stuff. And honestly, if my kid can't do this, I wouldn't stress about that. Like, that's fine. My five-year-old, when he, my son, when he was five, would not have been able to do that. My girls have been fine to do that. So, you know, if your kid's not, that's okay. You could get them to like trace it with their finger instead or something like that. Um, or just skip it until, you know, I wouldn't stress about the handwriting part of it. Um, I would just do, you know, the other activities. So here you've got connecting the dots. And then I'm just skipping through obviously a bit how many sides are on the shapes. This is where they could fill this up with the shape blocks. The good and the beautiful math or their simply good and beautiful math has plenty of this still and their old version had lots of that. My kids always have really enjoyed it. Here there's a lot more handwriting but this is like quite a bit into the book now. Here we go. You can see where my <laughs> printer was starting to have some real issues. Um, write numbers to match. So they're writing their numbers in there and they're starting. You can see there's some basic additions starting to take place there. And by this point, we're now up to lesson 16.4. So we're like halfway through the book now and they are doing addition. 
some simple addition. You got some tin frames and we're learning about tin and. So we're learning about the teens. Oh my goodness, look at the printer. Needed a printed cleaning, but that's okay. My daughter's not gonna care, <laughs> still does the job. Here we're focusing on weights, what's gonna be heavier. Cross out two, so we're starting to do some subtraction here. Some more subtraction. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Here we're counting by twos. Counting by fives here. And then we're doing calendar work, which is fantastic. Some time work. And you can see we're up to 85, so we're going right through all the numbers. Let's see what's here. And there we go, there's your final lesson there. Up to 100, make it a little um, certificate at the end. There's some coloring in here as well. So yeah, my daughter's very much looking forward to this. It's lovely, it's simple, but it's still colorful and fun. And um, I think it is a fantastic option for kindergarten. I hope that was helpful and gave you a good overview of what Math with Confidence kindergarten grade looks like. Um, I am excited to get started on it next year and yeah, if you have any questions about it, do leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars.